very lucky to have on the line Bruce Kulik. Bruce, thanks for taking the time to talk to me today. Thank you for having me there all the way far away in Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're in Los Angeles at the moment, so you're... Yeah, I live in L.A. I came out here like in 86, uh, a couple of years into my uh, start with KISS, because Gene moved out, and then Paul bought some property out here, too. And I haven't left, and then I brought my you know, parents out, you know, and I only have my mom now. She's 90, God bless her. But we're pretty comfortable here in Los Angeles because uh, it's like a very, very comfortable, like 23, I'll talk in centigrade, 23 degrees, and uh, the rest of the country has like zero, you know what I mean? So it's, uh, you know, it seems like the West Coast is, yeah, yeah, good weather. Excellent. Now you're in KISS for close on 12 years. Now that's a long stint uh in yep. any band now we don't want yep. to take up too much of your time talking about kiss but how was that time you know i i, I obviously i get asked that a lot uh big uh, that's a big question obviously <clears throat> in many ways it was everything you thought you know in other words extremely exciting fans always like wanting to meet you touch you be near you you know, obviously, if you wanted to find a girl, it was pretty damn easy, okay? If you um, wanted to stay out all night and, and get crazy, you could. I, I, I didn't approach my career that way like, like maybe other bands or other artists have, you know. Um, Gene and Paul, you know, very, very hardworking um, and very professional about what they did. And I kind of was like the worker bee vibe of um, I want to play the best guitar I can in the band and be be one of the wheels on the car, but I'm not driving it, if you get what I'm saying, okay? Yeah. Gene and Paul created this thing along with Ace and Peter, although they were always kind of obviously the dominant forces in the band, not to take anything away from Ace or Peter, but the point is they were both as figure, you know, spokes, spokesperson vibe and, and also in the songwriting and performing. So uh, I just wanted to be the... Um, you know, the, the best guitar player I could be, and a real team player, I did get a chance to be creative and, and uh, help write some songs and everything. So it was really, really, you know, extremely exciting. Although, of course, you know, once you're in it, you, you don't realize that, mm. you know, I'd be like kind of talking about those years, you know, 30 years on and things like that. that that's always remarkable. And in fact, this, this trip coming up in March for me to Australia uh, is coming almost exactly around the first time that in my years with KISS, I knew they went earlier on to Australia, but in 95, it was a very big deal that we went to Australia. And, mm. and I'll, I'll never forget it. You know, it was extremely exciting. It was the first time we tried a KISS convention, official one, you know, that KISS actually appeared at. Mm. And uh, it, it's it's really, really uh, amazing to be even still talking about, you know, mm. these, these journeys I've had with that band. Uh, and of course, I'm extremely proud of it. Yeah. What was it like to have been living in the fishbowl for so long? Because, you know, with Kiss, I mean, I'd have to imagine that you'd be like under the microscope the whole time, yeah. wherever you went, wherever. Well, I, I know Gene and Paul were always very protective of, you know, how they were viewed and their image and how they handled their um you know, kind of their your personas, you know. Yeah. Although, you know, there we were just uh wanting to you know, get in, do the best show we could. And it wasn't a, a crazy, um, we weren't the kind of band to, to, to go, you know, out getting nuts, you know, after the show. So, you know, I have to admit the drama was very limited, thank God. There were bands that, you know, there's a wild card, the guy gets thrown in jail, what are you going to do? Are you going to make it to the next city? You know, you get what I mean. I don't have to remind you of, of how... Uh, sometimes there are musicians that are very talented, but they're, they're, being in a rock and roll band gives mm -hmm. them carte blanche to be morons, okay? Mm. Yep. <laughs> Gene and Paul, extremely professional, hardworking. It was about doing a great show. It is a business. They're, they're blessed to be in that business, you know what I mean? And, and so it, being in the fishbowl, I, I was very much mindset like them. You know, I, I grew up in New York, and I was very – uh, lower middle class that I have the opportunity to be, you know, um, you know, in a situation like a lead guitar player of Kiss, where where everything is first class and 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 the fans all love you. Uh, it, it feels very rewarding, and it was something I was very respectful of, you know. Mm. Um, you're comfortable with your legacy with them? 
Yes, very much. It's 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 an interesting one. <clears throat> Excuse me, only because um, you know, once I was not in the band anymore because they went back to Ace and Peter, it was time and the reunion tour was hugely successful and then the makeup it was easier for them to continue that way and and since then 96 they've been still in makeup um my era really represented the almost the entire they were actually out of makeup for 13 years it was a short period where vinnie mm-hmm. vincent who i know you know <laughs> you mentioned earlier uh <laughs> just happened to be yeah happened to you know be unmasked on MTV. You remember that big moment in 83. So when I came in, it wasn't like, okay, well, I had to make up a persona. You know, I, I have a unique position in the, in mm. the history, or as we say, the history of the band, because I, I never had, I never had the makeup on. And yeah. yet I was there for 12 years and, you know, many, many golden platinum records and touring the world and, and huge shows everywhere videos and DVDs and you, you get the idea. My, my walls are filled with gold records, okay, and platinum records and awards from those 12 years. Um, the Hall of Fame last year put a big spotlight on the band and, and the controversy of the early years versus the later years, which of course Gene and Paul were very adamant about 40 years of Kiss, not the first four years of Kiss, you know. Um, but uh, I kind of wave the flag just to sum it up of the non-makeup era. And I'm very proud of that. And I kind of do play more songs when I perform that are not uh, the typical ones that they perform Mm. because um, that's my comfort zone, first of all. And second of all, I know that they're not played often by them live. Mm. And it's not because they didn't like those things. It's just, you know, they're very comfortable kind of doing, they have moved on and did new albums and new material, but they're very comfortable doing more a live one, a live two. Mm. And it's not all about a live three, which was my, my live record with them or mm. asylum and crazy nights and hot in the shade and revenge albums. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Which were some of the highlights of my career, you know, and by the time actually I got to Australia with them, uh, that was uh, about, about a year and a half or two from, you know, when revenge and a live three were out. So, I was well um, known by the fans. It was, there yeah. was no mystery who's yeah. coming on guitar, you know. Mm. Now, after Kiss, we'll move on from Kiss. Um, you did three albums with Union. Tell us about uh, tell us a bit about that band. Well, it was a natural thing to say, like, well, it's time for me to. I did feel like I was thrown out of someone's house, if you get know what I mean. <laughs> like, like the family kicked you out, you know. And and there I am. Where am I going to live? What am I going to do? You know. And it was kind of ironic that I was going through a, a, a you know, a divorce with my wife. It, it was unrelated to the Kiss, um, you know, the change in career with the Kiss. But it was it was time for that to happen too. And uh, I, it was it was a real hard time for for a little while there. Um, but you know, I always say when. When when times are tough, that's when you got to really toughen up and 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 handle it, you know. And uh, I remember this manager that worked with Kiss was a big fan of John Karabi, who is still a dear friend of mine, uh, who also kind of was kicked out of the house of Motley Crue, you know, uh, uh, just around the same time. So we kind of got together, just kind of like we're very different, you know. Um, it, it it truly is the very yin yang, you know, our relationship and and mm. and the way he looks and you know he's tattooed and pierced and and hair and he looks like a homeless man now and and his wife who's who's wonderful she thinks he's the handsomest guy in the world like that you know what I mean and <laughs> and there I am you know you know just tall skinny Jewish guitar player dude you know what I mean anyway we we hit it off immediately musically and we had a lot of respect for each other from our previous um you know what we knew about each other career wise and the chemistry was there we started writing we recruited an amazing bass player Jamie Hunting uh a drummer who's gone on to a lot of amazing stuff Brent Fitz who's been playing with Slash the past 4 or 5 years now uh and I think he's he's coming to Australia or something he's been there many times you know um and and we did the first studio album, then we did a second one, you know, and then a live record, and there was a DVD that followed up, which was, you know, all good stuff. I'm very proud of the band. I know people always ask, because it's kind of a cool name to say, like, so when's the reunion reunion, you know? <laughs> but uh, we're all so busy doing other things. I don't know. You know, I really don't know. But, but look, John's been on some of my solo records. On two of them, he's performed for me. I've toured with him along with Eric Singer many times. Brent's a dear friend of mine. I just saw him last month in Vegas where he lives. And we, 
I, I saw Jamie in, in January here at, in L.A. at the big NAM show, the music, uh, you, you know, hmm. uh, big convention show. So, you know, and everybody has a lot of respect for each other, and we all keep in touch. Yeah. What about the Eric Singer project? How was uh, how was that to work then? Well, you know, we're all so busy. I mean, even though the Eric Singer project involves John and myself, uh, and Chuck Garrick has been um, the bass player, uh, you know, that we use, who's from Alice Cooper, who also is another one. Alice, like, lives to be on the road all the time. Yeah. So between Eric's commitments with Kiss, you know, I'm a full-time guitar player with Grant Funk, and we don't go on tour like, okay, bye, I'll be home in six weeks, you know. We just do mostly weekend fly dates, but that could keep me busy, you know, 35 weekends of, mm. of the year out of the okay. 52, which, which gives me uh, busy travel. But, you know, I get to be home with my wife and in my home for, for four or five days of the week, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, and, and, and sometimes the trips are a little longer when we have like two or three gigs in a row. But the point is, uh, it's very hard for us to make those plans. And, and we all are respectful of that, you know. We always have to wait first for Eric because with Kiss being the 800-pound gorilla, I guess mm. it's like, all right, is Kiss really going to take off three months so that we could all coordinate something? You know what I mean? If it's, mm. What if Eric's thing is like, I'm free for three weeks? You know, that that's not a good good enough window for all of us. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's been really hard for us, and we haven't been able to do the four of us in many years now. And it's kind of ironic, a, a couple of the people that work with us whenever we tour – the offers keep going up, you know what I mean? Like, and, and we're not like trying to, you know, raise the price of the band. It's more like, Hey, we can't get together, yeah. you know, cause it's not all about doing it for money. It's, it's about doing something that's completely different than what all of us typically do, you know? Yeah. And, and, and uh, I know we had a great time in Australia and we actually filmed the gig in Sydney and that's that that it's not easy to find that DVD because kind of like we released it and didn't really distribute it in any major way. But yeah. it was Union Live at the there was a club called the Marquee that yeah. year we were there and it came out really good. I'm, I'm real proud of it. But you know I'm very tight with Eric and all the guys. You know so I can't tell you about any plans that we would ever have though because of our our own schedules and commitments. Yeah. yeah. Now your solo albums. Um, tell us how they came about. Well, by the end of when, when Union was hitting that situation where we were, were trying to climb that wall to, of success, you know what I mean, and kept, get, kept getting kind of like boulders thrown at us, you know, even though we knew we were really good. Some of our, I mean, we had got a lot of fans with tattoos of like the symbol that represented the, the cover of the first album. And there's a lot of really good Union fans. But the problem is music was changing. We didn't have the big enough support from a big enough label. We didn't have the, 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 the right person to put us on tour. So we kind of struggled, and I got kind of, you know, discouraged. John, too. Everybody was kind of like, oh, boy, you know, this is getting really hard. What are we doing? And out of the blue, I remember I, I first knew I was going to do a solo record, okay, because I had material that was left over from the Kiss years that wasn't yes. really right for Union, but I thought I could, you know, take a swing at and get it together, and that became my album, Audio Dog. But while I was, like, kind of putting together Audio Dog is when I got the call from Don Brewer, that, that he was, you know, putting together uh, Grant Funk. Mark Farner had his own solo career now, and he found a great singer, but the singer, even though he plays some guitar, is not really a lead guitar player, and he wanted... I was on the short list. You know, I met him years ago when he toured with Seeger, who he's touring with right now again, Bob Seeger. But, um, we, you know, I knew his wife also from, from years ago, um, from the same Michael Bolton opening tour, which, which is what we did with Seeger. And the next thing I know, I'm in Grand Funk, and that's 15 years now. Yeah. 15. Unbelievable. So, time, time just uh, rockets pretty by. Pretty remarkable. I know, I know. It's unbelievable. Now, your most recent um, solo album, BK3, right. got, a, got a number of guests on that album. That must have been fun yeah. to do. And, and, you know, I got some exciting news about that, actually. Um, well, it came out actually just about five years ago. Uh, it came out in February of 2010, and ironically, besides all the special guests like uh, Gene Simmons and his son Nick and Eric Singer and John Karabi, who we talked about, and uh, uh, Tobias Samet from a German mm. singer who's very well known, mm. um, Steve Lukather, uh, the guy from The Knack, um, you know, Doug Feiger, who passed away. Uh, that year, actually, but I, you know, obviously, he recorded about a year and a half prior to that because I worked on BK3 for about 
four years actually, in between all the fly dates with Grand Funk and all the other things that I do. Um, and, and, you know, that it got the name because I know I, I talked about Audio Dog for a second, but then I did another record about two or three years later called Transformer. And then by the time I was getting ready to do another record is when I, I met a, a friend of mine that uh, was a big fan of mine that was a good producer, this guy Jeremy Rubellino, and he was like, I want to do your record, but I want you to, you know, really think out of the box. Let's go for people like Gene. Let's try to, you know, really make something different. And, and that's what we did. And... Um, what I'm excited about, brand new, tomorrow I physically go to the vinyl manufacturing plant here mm. in L.A. to pick up my copies. Uh, I ordered a, a batch of, of BK3 and vinyl. And wow. I'm very excited about that because, uh, first of all, the test pressing sounded amazing. And I, I can't even tell you that it took almost probably four and a half months from ordering it to, to get it manufactured. That's yeah. because... Uh, vinyl's hot now, and they don't have yeah. enough plants to do this. You know yeah. what I mean? But unreal. Um, it? It's going to be really cool to hold it and and hold one in my hand. And I don't care if people just want to collect it because there it is. It's vinyl. Keep it sealed. I don't care. But I can promise you, the product inside is going to sound great. And uh, and you know, I'm going to offer it worldwide on my site, on my website. So um, I, I don't know when I'm going to do it because I got a lot of traveling coming up and things to do that I got to. I want to do it right. You know, once I offer it for sale, I want to make sure that the people uh, are able to get the orders and everything. And I haven't actually sold something kind of new or unique like that in quite a while from my website. So yeah. I'm looking forward to getting it all going. And, um, you know, I'm still proud of the record, and I still think it's valid. I still have fans that tell me how much they love it. Or I have fans that, like, I'm the best guitarist in Kiss they ever knew, and they love me, and then I ask them, have you heard BK3? Oh, I'll have to check it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I still have more to do, I guess. Okay. I got more more promotion to do here, you know. Yeah. Now, you mentioned uh, you're touring with uh, Grand Funk Railroad, um, mm -hmm. going here and there and having the week at home and all this sort of thing. You're yep. coming to Australia very soon. Now, what's brought this on? How, right. have, you got the how have you got the time? I know. How do I have the time? Well, one thing, you know, and it's not impossible for me, even in a normal Grand Funk year, to go like, okay, these two weeks look good. I could grab a trip to Europe, as, you know, as long as I let, you know, the band know and the agent doesn't think anything's, you know, coming up then. Um, but I did get a little more aggressive about it this year because um, Bob Seger is an international star. I know he hasn't made it to Australia yet, but... He's huge, especially in America, and he loves to tour America every year. He skips sometimes a year, you know, but he's been touring lately. He only wants to tour with Don Brewer, who is really the leader of Grand Funk, okay? Yeah. And let me tell you, it's a wise choice. Don Brewer is one of the best drummers in rock and roll. I never have to worry about where the one is and what the beat is, okay? This yeah. guy is a... Is a he plays with feel, but he is so in the pocket. Eric Singer... Anytime we've played where he could come see us, he comes see us, okay? Because he just loves the way Don plays. And Don has a hell of a voice, too. He sang, and he actually wrote We're an American Band, too. Yeah, yeah. So Don goes off with Seeger, the Seeger dates. Sometimes we do a Grand Funk gig in between the Seeger dates. How Don can do that, I don't know, but let's face it. Like myself, you love to play. You know, if you have this gift and you have a career, you want to do it. So, uh, but long story short, knowing that Bob Seeger was touring for about on and off for about three months, I knew that March and February, I could, this is why I got involved and just came home from Vegas doing a rock and roll fantasy camp where I was a count. So I'm doing another one in the beginning of March with Cheap Trick and who is the cult of a special guest. And then that gives me the opportunity also in, in the month of uh, March to come out to uh, come down to Australia. I know he's done with the tour at the very end of Australia. The day I'm flying back is like like his last date, or or he's done with the tour. You know, ironically, so um, that works out. And then in April we have uh, we we have dates every weekend, right. probably May as well. You see what I mean? Yeah. So um, uh, I took advantage of that uh, when I was approached originally by by this guy that I've known in Australia for many many years now. Uh, about him, his desire to do a uh, convention in, uh, you know, in the Melbourne area. I was very interested, got my manager involved with him, and it, it, you know, it, it finally all came together. It's not always easy to piece it all together and make it happen, 
but um, now I'm committed, got my flights, and uh, I'm all set to, to make, make my way down there. And, of course, Adelaide, I've only been with KISS, and I think I did it one time uh, myself as well, and I couldn't remember, I couldn't tell you the name of the place that I went to, you know, to perform, but um, you have the information of where I'll be, and I'm really excited because I, I have friends from Adelaide, actually. Uh, it, it's remarkable when, you, when you're in KISS, a band like that, and then you go there on your own, you know, you're, there's always a country or there's always a city where there's somebody that, that somehow you've met and, and befriended and um, would, would uh, you know, do anything for you to make you comfortable in their home. And, and some of these people, I got friends from Melbourne, too, that they come visit and have, uh, have them over here in L.A. for dinner. So I have that kind of uh, pleasure of uh, meeting some wonderful people. So looking forward to, of course, uh, I've always gotten along with uh, the Australians, and I think the country is uh, kind of like America meets Europe. And, I, and, I, and hopefully you don't see that as an insult, but I see it as something really cool, you know. Excellent. Tell us about your band for this tour. Well, the band's going to have – this is what's really ironic about the band, okay, is the fact that one of the members – is someone that I've always played with. And I usually like this guy, Paul, that I'm friends with for many, many years, who's a great guitar player. He's in the industry. He, he's on tour right now handling things for uh, the big, um, well, it's that One Direction tour. Hey. Uh, I haven't had much time to talk to him lately. Yeah, you couldn't be any bigger than that, right? <laughs> but the guy is like an encyclopedia of rock and roll, has like 20 guitars, loves Kiss, plays guitar excellent. And it's usually his band that I'm always playing with. Unfortunately, the timing, it looks, it's looking like for Adelaide that I'll be playing with some younger players that I, have, that I know about, but I've never worked with them. But that's why when I'll be landing in Melbourne, I'll be rehearsing with them. And, you know, I, I got to admit that um, I really like working. I have a lot of affection for some of the younger artists who dream of being, you know, in the rock and roll business. First of all, and, and, I'm, and I am talking about the people from Sisters Doll, okay? Hmm. And you might have heard of them or not, but, you they know, I was the other very week, impressed. Actually. Oh, yeah, they, they, they did come to Adelaide, right? Mm -hmm. yep. But just keep in mind when, and I believe they'll be playing that night as well, a short set, but when, when they're part of my band with Paul, it's going to be a different animal, you know what hmm. I mean? They'll be, you know, I, in other words, the three days I have in Melbourne, it's going to be their rock and roll fantasy camp, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, and, and I can't tell you how much fun I have doing that because I know how to talk music to people that don't know music. I actually know they know music. I could tell that they're, that they're talented and they, they, they get it, okay? So it's not going to be as much of a struggle as telling a doctor who hasn't touched a guitar or drums or keyboards, you know, and my band that I just had in Vegas, you know, that they come for the fantasy of being in a rock band. We sounded really good after me whipping them into shape, you know, for, for three days, you know what I'm saying? And I know the three days of rehearsal is going to be a lot of fun. These guys love Kiss. They'll get to learn it and play it the way I want them to play it. And Paul is like my secret weapon because he's just, you know, a great guitar player. And, you know, he knows, he knows what's coming out of my mouth before I say it. You know what I mean? Uh, so, uh, and, and I know the guy who sings in Sister's Doll has got a really strong rock voice. So we're going to make it work. You know what I mean? Um, and, and typically, I'll be honest, typically I'd go there with, um, you know, probably some of Paul's guys. But it wasn't going to be possible for this trip with that gig in Adelaide. So I, I said, I'm, I like the challenge. I want to work with these guys. I'm going to, I'm going to make them, uh, my kiss band, it kiss band like, if you get what I'm saying, but yeah. it's going to be fun. You know, I'm looking yeah. forward to it because, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I can't really say that I've had those opportunities. My brother was a little older than me. So when he came home, you know, from going to England for the first time and playing with some famous people and he go like, look at this, look at this way of playing a G chord, Bruce. And I got so excited. Wow, I never would have thought of that. Hey, this other guy taught me this. Check this out. You get what I mean? And those little tips that he shared with me, and I, I was like, wow, it opened up a whole new world. So I, it, it's kind of fun to, like, I, I can't tell you, Kiss music is more complicated than you think. And, and I seem to really know it, of course. You know, I'm like certainly well trained with it, you know, after being in the band for 12 years. But I, and I could take about, you know, a lot of music. I, I don't always do Kiss songs when I do the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, but the point is I know how to take apart a song and, and, and help people play it the way, the way I feel would really represent it well. So 
I'm looking forward to rehearsing with the guys. Uh, I did I did the same thing with Paul's guys, even though some of those guys are in pro bands, you know, and and tour and tour around. But it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to their energy, and I know that they're going to be really excited um, about about the opportunity to 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 be part of my my night there. You know, so it's going to be good. <laughs> Excellent. Now I was going to say where to after Australia, but I'm guessing you're back on the plane. Hooking up with Grand Funk pretty quickly, am I right? Yeah, pretty quickly. I mean, you know, we had the Adelaide show, and then um, I don't know if I'm heading right back to Melbourne. There may be something I can do in Sydney. You know, my manager's still looking at things. But irregardless, um, I know um, the, the, the Big Kiss Expo, and I, I can tell you right now, there'll be people from Adelaide that will make the trek to Melbourne mm-hmm. to go to that. You know, yeah. it's a, uh, I, I've been calling it Expo. They're really calling it a Kiss Convention. And um, and and I have something special planned for that too. My desire is to uh, actually do. I told you that 20 years ago when I went there was the first Kiss convention ever. Okay, and the band played acoustically, and that was a little interesting. And of course, we went on and did MTV Unplugged, which you may or may not be aware of. Yep. But that came out of the Kiss conventions. Hmm. So my desire, even though the people that are putting it on didn't ask me to do this, but what I want to do is with Paul and one of the singers that I know in Melbourne do songs um, from that kind of time period, you know, hmm. uh, and of Unplugged and everything and play an acoustic set at the yeah. convention. You see what I'm saying? That yeah. wouldn't necessarily be as appropriate at the uh, club in Adelaide. I think that's turn it up to 11 and, and, and rock out. You know that's what it. I mean? But um, I want to do that there. And, um, you know, and then, yeah, there's two days there, and then and then I'll be on my way home. And then I believe the weekend after I'm back, I'll, I should arrive in L.A. on a Sunday. I believe I'm back on the road that Thursday or Friday, and it would be, the, you know, with Grand Funk. Exactly. Busy man. Yes. And you know what? An idle musician is not a happy musician. I will tell you that. Uh, Bruce, absolutely magnificent talking to you today. Thanks for taking the time and looking forward to seeing you at the Bridgeway Hotel in March. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, and I hope hope to greet you in person there, along with all my fans in Adelaide. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Thanks, Bruce. Okay, you take care.